Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Troom Breaker The Witcher Tales. Uh, I'm just clearing up the rest of the map because I'm looking for the remaining treasure maps on this thing. There we go. The Gobor Zigrin cart, but animated. There we go. Claim. And uh, we'll continue along the map. I've uh, triggered a few things, and there seem to be more question marks that I actually missed. So uh, we'll see about those in a minute. So there we go, there's uh, another report over here as well. My queen, our scouts noticed a glimmer in the eye of that bass relief sculpture. We could scale it, but our engineers would have to prepare the proper equipment. Though a fall from that height is sure to result in a broken neck. What is your command? I wish to know what it is and finish up that last card. There we go, Northern Wind, the card is complete. Let's check that out. Northern Wind, damage all damaged enemies by four, then damage all enemies by two. Interesting. I'm actually going to swap out the Lyrian Horn for that. Sounds a bit more interesting, because I usually damage enemies with the Manticore Trophy anyway. So that's going to be nice. Then near Davor's Abyss, I apparently missed something on this bridge here. Yeah, it broke off and there's cards down there. Milady, we've spotted gold down there among the debris. We can send a few soldiers to dig it up, but if the rope snaps, those rocks will serve as their final resting place. Uh, I don't want to risk that, so let's just leave that right here. And then the final treasure map is, I think, around here somewhere near the... Yeah, over here. So in the blizzard area, I can show you that on the map, actually. So there's the dragon. That was Skeletilis' cave, so it's right over here. Let's open that up, and we get another avatar. No, Skeletilis regeneration. You've discovered a card that can be used in the grand multiplayer card game. I know Skeletilis, and it doesn't actually have 60 health but I mean that's cool and all but I don't think and it's even not called like that as well so Kaltalus Regeneration is not the name but never mind it's just gonna be Kaltalus okay that is all I think so let's head towards the summit meeting so there is of course still the fact that the Nilfgaardians are camped over there still don't I'm not entirely sure whether I shouldn't attack them, or I should, I could, but then again, you know what, let's, because we've done pretty much everything else in, uh, on this map, let's leave the Nilf Guardians be and hope that that's the right decision for Bruver. and uh, I think I'm going to tell Bruver about what the Ziggurans did as well, because we'll see, we'll see how this goes, so uh, let's head in. And, oh, he's standing at the gates himself. Hello, Bruver. So, you are approaching an important moment in your journey. We spent eight hours here. We completed 12 quests, seven puzzles, five standard battles, and we found all golden chests, which means we can continue. Bruver stood by the bridge like a statue, arms crossed, eyes squinting. Meave sighed inside. She stood little chance of having a pleasant chat. Elder in chief, sir. No Saren and Grayson here, lass. Plowing humans. Always out to fix things, always end up cocking them up. You think you're due glory, do you? Monster slayer Meave? Patroness of dwarves? Blast it. What do you think? Why didn't I exterminate those beasts myself, eh? Go on, tell me. For you. For I didn't want to. For something didn't fit, damn it. So I resolved to not destroy their nests and evidence till I learned the truth of who done it. Postponed it all those years expressly. Though your subjects were dying. I didn't need no lectures from the likes of you. Justice must be served. That's worth any price. And I was close. Had leads. And now it's all gone to hell. You flooded Davor's abyss. You brought Poro's rump down on itself. And I'll never ken who killed the Fuchses. Understand? Never! Well, that makes this even easier. Um, look to the Zigrins. We're gonna lose Gabor, but I'm very well aware of that. And I don't really care. He's been lying to us this entire chapter, so... Look to the Zigrins. I would not be so sure. Sure a bloody what? that you shall never learn the truth. For I learnt it just moments ago. Twas the Zigrins who killed the Fuchses. The Zigrins? But, oh, hold. Aye, and 
explain a lot, that. Ah, the snakes, worms, rogues! Why, I'll show them. All right. Got to admit you've more in that pretty heat of yours than I expected. But dinner you start thinking we'll be toasting a new friendship. You want our aid? You'll have to answer our questions. My questions. Oh, Lots crap. of them. And they're all hard, so dinner you go smiling at me yet. Okay. Why I wouldn't dare. Better not. Crap. Right. Time we moved on. We're gonna get questions about the dwarven laws, aren't we? Hoover set off at a brisk pace, paying me nor anyone else heed. The elders' bodyguards rushed after him, then came the Lyrian force, and at its end trudged Gabor Zigrin, hands and feet in shackles. There we go. Goodbye, Gabor. Yeah, I like Gabor as a character, but of course, he has been lying to us this entire time, and I feel like he might even be... Yeah, more than that. I'm wondering if he's gonna be the, the traitor as well. It feels like that might be too simple. On Langbridge, it is strictly forbidden to stomp, jump, lean over the edge, stop for a rest, carve runes in the handrails. Hoo hoo ha, so let's not stop for a rest then. That's all top of rest. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Dwarves demonstrate innovative thinking in many domains. Metallurgy, engineering, architecture. Yet there is one in which they could not be bothered. Naming. For this reason, the bridge that linked the Mahakam Pass with Mount Carbon was simply named Langbridge. Meave learned it was a thoroughly fitting name. Having stopped for a breath halfway across the road suspended over a deep chasm, the Queen could see neither end of the bridge, both concealed by thick clouds. Amazing, whispered the Queen. I feel as though we traversed the very sky. The Queen and her retinue were nearing Mount Carbon when Meave heard a cry. It was Xavier. Hold! Hold! Meave drew in her reins abruptly. Her mare neighed and reared, lifting the Queen above her formation of men. From that height, she saw the last pier of the bridge crumbling. The dwarves at the head of the procession were unable to stop in time and plummeted, screaming into the abyss. What's the meaning of this, goddammit? Bruva roared. Face the engineers! No! The queen was striving to calm her spooked mount when she sent Boyatel. something to swish past her ear. Out of nowhere, a Scoyatel band had appeared at the rear of the column. Before anyone could react, elven archers had felled the rear guard. The soldiers lay on the bridge's stone surface with arrows in their backs. Meave was trapped. In one direction lay the chasm, in the other, a fierce foe. So she that was no go for the queen. To stand and fight. That was Espe and Rena as go for the queen. There we go. Squiretel. So don't forget that the Squiretel actually work for Nilfgaard at this point. So the Lydians watched in disbelief as Squiretel warriors slit in the throats of Mahakam guards. How could this be? Non-humans against non-humans? To what end? Could it be the elder races do not uniformly support the squirrel's cause? No doubt these questions and more plagued the men's thoughts, yet this was not the time to entertain them. This was a time to fight. We get extra cards, probably the dwarves that were in the procession, and it is a shortened battle, so this should be fine. There we go. Sevel. We trapped your grace, but we can try and fight our way through. Okay. So what do we have do here? Be cast. So Squire Tell Tracker. Damage an enemy by five and its adjacent units by two. Cooldown three. Cliff. Permanent resilience. Immune. Whenever a unit is moved to the same row as Cliff, destroy it. And damage a unit by two if it was already boosted. Damage it by six instead on a one cooldown. Let's start off with the Grey Rider. Yes? What does Bruva do? Two Mahakam protectors and move an enemy from the melee to the ranged row. So let's use Meave. And get a drummer up. And the third. Got business for me. Then the regiment drummer. Left. Right. Move him up. Left. And, and right. the turn. So that's six, okay. Then the drummer again. 
We get another drummer. Again and again. And again. a grey rider. I live to serve you. Then. We have a lot of units over there. I can't play. Yeah, I need to play a trinket from the graveyard. But spawn two Mahakam protectors and move an enemy from the melee to the ranged row. And he's a boss. Do I lose? If I lose Prover? Ah, we'll see. Ah, the cute poor bags can do whatever the devils you please. This is Mahakam! A Mahakam indeed. So let's get the elven archer to the back. And kill them off immediately. Ah! And they get down into the cliff. And Bruver is boosted to an ungodly amount. So there we go. And end the turn. That one archer is going to have to die soon. But for now we're Special pretty much price. okay. Just for you, love. Now, if we use Meave. Uh, you know what? First let's use Golden Froth on this row then let's use Meave to get our final drummer out there we go and use that over here drummer down Army's a waste of time for one like me and for the, the cavalry up and they keep getting boosted which is fine by me then I'm going to have to start thinking about uh, the Lyrian Harshtuk will go in the middle. Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh. Destroy Scorn. a damaged unit. That's going to hurt if that hits me. So let's spawn and play two random trinkets. Although... You know what? Let's just fill the rows first. So let's do this. Life had me flowed. Now here I'm marching proud. Then get the regiment drummer up with the Wackenberg. Those move over there. Then we get Barnabas. I think you really He's like gonna this play one. a trinket. Damage the highest unit on the battlefield up to 15 and boost lowest unit by the same amount. Damage three units by three have already destroyed. Damage destroy them instead. We're not gonna do that, but we'll go for Bacchus Dark Mirror, because that's gonna kill the 12th. Unit. Oh no, I damaged my own units. Okay, that does work like that. Okay, never mind. Let's move the regiment drummer and get Reynard over here. We must trust each other. There we go. And then a Lyrian Arbalest is gonna take six damage. Um, on the Swordsmaster over here. I need to be careful because I need to get... Yeah, okay. I need to get the Forager on the field as quickly as possible because I have too many units on the field right now. So let's end the turn. More brigades. The Fryhead Brigade, no abilities. Ah, that was annoying because of Bacchus Darkmere. Ah, we destroyed. We got the one... Drummer destroyed. Ah, we lost the armor on the Wagenberg. That is annoying. Okay, then I feel like the Forager first. So let's go, does this actually do something? Resilience and four armor, but resilience is useless in this match, so that's fine. So let's use the Forager, this row. I only need corpses, except some that one rider doesn't move. Fresh. Then we can actually use one drummer. And we get a Rivian Sapper. That is uh, okay. Stop your yapping and start digging. Fair enough. So let's damage another unit. That one. And then we can use the Forager to destroy two units over here, and then use our final drummer to get an Arbalest that does seven damage. Seven damage. Do I want to use that to take out the sword monster? I think I should, right? And then we get the medic. Which is actually interesting. You know what? Let's just use the seven on one of these. Because we get the Wagenberg as well. So if we then use the medic what do over you want here. Of me? We get another one of those dwarfs. And we can do that <laughs> again. Leave it to us. And uh, we can use the Wagenberg with seven damage on this road, taking out an archer, sword, and 
Boss kind of smugly. There we go. That was a nice bonus. Then we can use Northern Wind next time. And even use Lyrian Blacksmith to do that Your again. Tricks will not save you, Dwarf. So there we go. Let's use the Northern Wind. To damage all damage units by four. And then the rest again by two. Then Meave. Oh, no, that was a mistake. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Um, that's a mistake because the cavalry is going to boost, going to get out of here as well. So we get another cavalry unit. Probably best to lay an Arblast just in case I can actually pull that one, but I won't. So yeah, God that's too bad. The queen. We'll see what happens. Maybe I can destroy a few units on the field if I get a good trinket. But I have enough points to actually get rid of uh, now we will everything, see I think. Weak. And, or maybe he actually kills something. Almost, almost. Then the blizzard. That is, I can damage three units by three, right? Yeah. So if they're already damaged, kill them instead. So if I take out the drummer and then those two, which are damaged, I can do that. And then again, northern wind. Okay, that's not going to do much. That's just going to do two damage. Okay. Then I think we should probably play a trinket from the graveyard. Because uh, I think, what do I have in the graveyard? I have a lot in the graveyard. We saw allies on the road by four. That's going to be best, probably. So there we go. Golden Frog. And it just attacks that until it's also six. And then this row, all to four. So that gives us a nice boost of 36. And we'll end the turn. We pretty much won this easily. Riot! Spawn two copies of it. But I don't think they actually do anything now. They don't have an ability. So uh, let's just trigger Meave's ability one more time. Just for laughs. Uh, and then we can actually toss this away. There we go. Done and done. No! Bled Arena! She must die! So, seven. combined, the Lyrians and Dwarves managed to defeat the Scoia'tael. The Gorillas had weakened the last span of the bridge turning the crossing into a deadly trap. Had Xavier, who noticed the weakened structure at the last instant not called out, all would have fallen into the chasm. The Lyrians managed to capture the unit commander. She stood, her head raised high, and when Meave glared at her, she did not avert her eyes. I'm wondering if we could have actually not had Xavier in that case, because he warned us we, must have, we might have actually lost uh, units otherwise. <laughs> Crow's Eye. What is your name, Elf? Abayeth met a past one. Yeah, kiss my ass. She said, uh... Thank you, Reynard. I know well what she said. Kiss my ass. Is that truly the best you can muster? Oh, yeah, my Elven is on point. I'd rather show you exactly what I can muster. Tell them to unbind me. You got your opportunity. On the battlefield. Will you not tell me what they call you? Fine. It's all the same to me. I'm more interested to know how you came to be here. Who sent you? No one. It was my decision to kill you, and thus avenge Eldane. You've elven blood on your hands. The blood of the elves of the Mulderwood. Um... Eldane was a criminal. I regret the events in the Mulderwood, the fate of the elves there. Um... Yeah, he kind of led them into their own trap. I regret the events of the Mulderwood. I did not wish those elves deaths, yet they left me no choice. What choice would you give a murderer who invaded your home? <sighs> you know I envy you. To see the world solely as black or white, it must simplify things so. Enough. I've heard all I wish to hear. But I have none. Did you fall in your heed, elf, eh? If you want to fight humans, go on and do it. You cannot talk sense to agents and nay here, damn it. Mahakam is and will be neutral. You cannot be neutral. To Dwan, you are either their foe or their dog. Mahakam has stood aside sleeping long enough. That is why we struck it in its very heart, as a call to battle. A call to brethren whom you, Elder, have kept from the world too long. I have kept him away. I've been bloody right to do so. You want to play at war, you numpties? 
You want to force the Ponter to flow upstream? Gang right ahead! Good riddance, I say! Gun kill, gun die if you fancy, but God damn it, leave us alone! Yeah, I should kill you. With my own hands, I should cut your throat, put you out of your misery. That's what you want, in it? To die? To die a stupid death? Well, I'll not grant you that. Nay, nay, I'll lock you in a tower. Sit there three centuries, and you just might grow a brain. Bruva Hoog gazed after the shackled elf as she was led away. Neve expected him to continue fuming, cursing her. But the dwarf stood silent. And his old eyes, half concealed by brows bushy as a forest floor, showed not anger, but the deepest sadness. Dwarven engineers made quick work of repairing the crumbled bridge span. Okay. So of course that makes sense. Bruver doesn't want the elves to die any more than uh, than they, yeah, than we want actually, because we never wanted to kill elves. They just attacked us first. Mount Carbon. Look, Mount Carbon. Damn. And I thought Novograd was big. Okay. Yeah, indeed. Against us. Against our elder. Treacherous hounds. Treacherous hounds. Wow, that is really, really quiet. Dead. What are you saying? I can't hear ya. Okay, Mount Carbon. Wipe your feet, comb your beard, but foreign garb bring not in here. Carbon's heart, can you hear the troll? You're a dwarf, dammit, not a slob. Hoo, hoo, ha. So here we go. We got access to... Mount Carbon, look at that in the background. The Lyrians stepped inside Mount Carbon's bowels. Neve rode while looking upwards, admiring the intricately carved ceiling, gilded walls, monumental bas reliefs carved from basalt. Yet this was no time to admire the sights. Ruva Hoog had summoned her to speak. I thank you for your invitation, Elder. My invitation? Choice term, lass. You wangled your way in here. Long I've lived, but ne'er have I seen a wench so stubborn. With all due respect, do you not feel like a pot conversing with a kettle? Ha! <laughs> True enough. Changes of mind didn't come easy to me. But they do come at times. Human wars concern me not at all. For so many they are, who could count them? A year goes by without one wanking king invading another's realm. A dog with scabies is less restless. That's why this morning I aim to send you off with nothing. Matter not what the clans were saying. Rivia, Schmivia, who gives a sheep's fart? But that was this morn, before that daft wench and her pups attacked. Nilfgaard supports the Scoyatel, it's common knowledge. Nilfgaard uses them. Well, I'm nay worse, and I choose to use Queen Meave. Okay, that sounds good. Um, you must have conceived the plan, Dad. I will not be a tool. Um, so what use would you make of me, if I might ask? You've a plan? Aye, the kind dwarves like best. Simple, but sneaky. Sneaky. Like to give Nilfgaard a warning, you can. If you're going to rile my dwarves, throw them into the Scoyatel ranks. You'll regret it, eh? But I'd like to issue the warning without declaring war. All clear to you so far. So, when you march out of Mahakam, you'll find a company of our foot dwarves waiting out with the gate. Officially, volunteers enlisting with you against my will. And you're to put them at the fore next time you face Nilfgaard. Want the black lads to break their teeth on our bucklers, get a taste of our axe blades. After that, dare say they'll think twice before they send more Scoyatel into these hells. Okay. I do not. Thank you, Elder. You restore my hope that I shall have my home back in the end. <laughs> a week back, I'd have laughed you down the mountain. At last, you're a plucky wench. And let's summit in that heat of yours. 
talk so many clans over to your side, stead easy. Who cares? It just might be the end to drive Nilfgaard back across the Yaruga. I shall. You will see. Before the year is up, you've my word. Oh, yeah. Reaching for the stars. You shan't get there without resources. I'll see to it you want for an out. I shall be in your debt to my dying day. Psh, meaning what? For another 15 years? <laughs> awesome. This card has been added to your army. Volunteer Corps. Mahakam Mangler. Mahakam Shield Bay. Like and that's it. So by your leave? Nay, <laughs> not granted. At once? What's that mean? Our laws are clear. Guests Drink. have to be sent off with a thundering feast. There we go. The humans. Bruva, as was Bruva's wont, insisted. So the Queen accepted the invitation, but as was her wont, set a condition. The feast was to last but one night and not, as was the wont of local custom, an entire week. All clans oh, yeah. were to be represented this is all awesome. the Save one, of course. The Ziggins. The for they had already learned their punishment. The entire clan was banished from Mahakam. An exception was made for one of their number, for Gabor, who was beheaded before the day was done. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's the price we had to pay. He had it coming himself. Of course, he was following orders, but yeah. Rest in peace, Gabor. When the sun had retired behind the peaks, the underground city came alive with the sound of bugles, bagpipes and horns. The dwarves emerged out into the central square and danced exuberantly, sparks kicking up from their hobnail boots. The usually crabby elder-in-chief Hoog proved a cordial host that evening. Let's drink! Lest our neck shafts grow cobwebs! Suddenly a messenger arrived. Bruver lifted his copper horn to his ear and listened with furrowed brow. What's that? Speak up! When she saw a sour grin on his face, Meave knew the tidings were not good. Yet she did not suspect they pertained to her directly. Meave, you expecting anyone? How's that? Runner says a delegation's arrived at Carbon. Freluria and Rivia got a Nilfgaardian escort. Uh-oh. How dare they? Traitors. Who leads it? Uh, Ardalab Day. Or her son. Who leads the delegation? It's your son. Villain, I fear. Villain? Well, don't, just don't let them in. Mahakam remains neutral as regards all your squabbles. I trust I needn't remind you. So I'll have no scrambling, no shoving, and certainly no bloodshed. Point of fact, I'd prefer it if you... I wish to speak to him. I'd forbid you, but, as I said, never seen a more stubborn wench. All righty then, jabber away with him. Just remember, hands to yourself. Oh, oh this is going to be banners, painful. A Lyrian eagle upon one surrounded by Nilfgaard's black rags. Her hands became fists, showing how helpless she felt. Then her son and rival, Willem, emerged from behind a row of Imperial footmen. My, my. I should apologize. It seems I missed the coronation. Congratulations, my son. Who was it who placed the crown? General Epdahi? Count Caldwell. Ah, yes. Our elder statesman. Why have you come here, of all places? To acquire arms for Nilfgaard? As my official mission, yes. Yet unofficially, I wish to speak with you. I trust you've had tidings from the field. Edern turned to ash and dust. Vizimir murdered Redania in chaos. Faltus forced to strike a pact by his vassals betrayed. Hensult the same. This limerick, will it come to a point? Why, yes. To the same as this war. Mother, I beg you, you must see it. N Nilfgaard's victory is inevitable. Surrender now, and I shall show you mercy. For later, later it'll be too late. I would love it if that was an option there right now. No later. We shall Just repel game them, over. drive them south at the points of our pikes. This we, mother, who precisely do you mean? You stand alone. Uh, have you seen the small army that's behind me? 
Better to stand alone than... Yeah, I'm not gonna... So it seems to you, but I've allies many. I'm not gonna tell him that. I don't trust him one bit. I prefer to stand alone over standing with Nilfgaard, with the invader, as you do. Mother, in declaring for the Empire, I saved the lives of thousands of our subjects. And in so doing, our honor lost. Folk who had their huts burned down care deeply about our honor. Is that truly your belief? When I was crowned, a fact you deride, though that makes it no less true, I swore the good of my subjects would guide me. And a war we are doomed to lose cannot in any way benefit them. And slavery can. You know well the Blacklads put peasants in chains, like cattle. Reprehensible, I agree, but... And resettlement? Forced labor? Cruel laws that make death the punishment for the slightest offenses? Are those benefits? Well, answer me! I see I will not sway you, mother. A shame, though I take comfort in the fact I tried. And now... Okay. You... You're a little weasel, aren't oh, you? Oh, no. I, not you, will decide when this conversation is over. Oh, have we anything else to discuss? Um, did you hear the Nilfgaardians tried to kill me? Are you perhaps aware that the Nilfgaardians tried to kill me? What? No, I... I, I heard only about an avalanche. Which tumbled down through no small effort of an Imperial envoy. Never would I have agreed to such a heinous act. I believe you. I'm heartened that, despite all we... I believe you because I believe the North Guardians wouldn't ever have asked your opinion. <laughs> Stab, burn! Think on it, son. Are you their ally or their tool? Can you ever be sure? I love how even though his armor is golden like Neve's was, it looks really, really childish for some, for some reason. With the blue cloth all over the place, I loved Meave's armor way better. I am the king of Lyria and Rivia. To serve my subjects' best interests, I am prepared to make even the most painful concessions. Might I leave now? Or is there more? There is more, buddy. Naturally. How did you know you would find me here? I... Ooh, I received no guardian reports to the effect that you've been seen in the past. Oh, roses are red and so are your cheeks, my son, as ever when you're caught in a lie. Lyria is two weeks' travel hence. Had you received word only once I was here, we'd have been long gone from Mahakam by the time you assembled a force and completed the march. I did think so as well. No. You were forewarned of our intended route. It means I've a traitor in my ranks. Still. Another one. Get out of my sight, villain. And pray we only ever face one another on neutral ground. Meave struggled inside not to turn and gaze once more at her son. he changed since they'd last faced each other, grown manlier, and he wore the crown well. The queen returned to the banquet hall. Her advisers shot her questioning glances, curious what she had discussed with Bruva. But Meave decided to keep the details to herself. One of them wore a Nilfgaardian lead around his neck. Until she knew who, she would have to remain vigilant. I mean, there's a number of suspects, of course. Feasting's done, Reynard. We must consider our next move. I've thought on it, Your Grace. We've strength enough to hit the foe, but still not the numbers to face him in open battle. Um... This is the first time I noticed this, but... Look at Reynard's symbol. Because... Meave just talked about that one of her companions has an Ilfgaardian noose around his neck. What does that look like, according to you, around the stag's neck? There's a black and yellow scarf around his neck. Oh, gold. So what do you propose? This war we cannot win alone, nor even with the dwarves at our side. But if we secure a victory, small yet symbolic, we shall show the other realms of the North all is not yet lost. Thus, I propose we attack behind the front lines, somewhere well clear of any major Imperial force. Where would you suggest? I'm considering Angren. To begin with, a thickly wooded marshy land, always helpful in clandestine operations. Secondly, the land strategically important, as it's the chief source of building material for Nilfgaard's fleets. All too little, I fear. Since we require a victory that would be symbolic, we must strike where it shall hurt. And Angren, 
just recently welcomed a new regent in the person of Count Coldwell, my third argument. Naturally, if your majesty wishes, I'm prepared to present alternatives to this. No need. We march at dawn. And of course, Reynard knows our every move. We've had oh. time, cajoled, persuaded, and gained the dwarf's support. She left Mahakam strengthened markedly. Even so, the queen was in a foul mood. For it was clear a traitor, a viper, nested among the Lyrians. Someone who had conveyed the queen's plans to her foe. From this moment on, Meave would need to weigh every word she uttered, even in the presence of her closest associates. Your Grace, we must plot our course forward. Shall we take the Western Passage into Angren, or...? Not now. When, then? Dawn approaches, yet we know nothing of where... I will not repeat myself. The Queen knew she would learn the traitor's identity in the end. If need be, she would tear the name from the throat of another turncoat, Count Caldwell. Meave drooled at the prospect of seeing Caldwell in chains, then passing him to the hangman. Saddle the horses. I shall take the fall. The time for diplomacy, for preparations and negotiations had gone. Meave was to attack her foe at last, and she could not wait to do so. We have the high ground. There we go. Another trophy. And... I feel like I'm gonna be right about this. Because Gascon actually helped us out quite a bit now. With the revelation At about Cowboy. At last, Meave's force reached Angren's marshy woods. Ever been? No? Count yourselves lucky. You certain we haven't lost our way? Alas, here there is no way. We continue south, that's all. South meaning the bottom. Should you ever venture there, I offer you this advice. Do your utmost to make no noise. Uh oh. Ooh. His comrades cried out, reached out. But alas, amidst frothing waters, they heard bones cracking, the moan of metal bent and crushed. What the bloody hell? What was that? I think we're gonna need no, a witcher. Know, personally. Hold your positions. Arms at the ready. That was a glusty war. It was a glusty war. There we go. One of many the Lyrians would encounter along their path. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. At last, Meave and her force stood upon the Yaruga's bank. To find and punish the traitor Caldwell, they would have to cross the river. Yet the sole bridge nearby was in Nilfgaard's hands. Okay. Because they do like their bridges. Aha. Uh -huh. Some new reports require your attention. Okay, that's good that we don't get pulled right into another battle. Look at this place. This looks gorgeous. Well, the artwork does. The rest doesn't seem so, uh, so nice. But uh, with that done... With Mahakam left behind successfully, we're going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And uh, I'll see you guys next time in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.